Hello Hello there. there. Kyle Katarn here. And the Bendu. Coming back for the finale of season one of Andor. Shout out to Nerd Chronic for editing this reaction for us and sneaking it past the Disney blockade. Oh, dude, I'm so hyped. Yeah. So much has happened this season. None of it expected. <laughs> like, man, this show has taken some turns. Like, we always we always kind of had Andor looming as, like, this mysterious show. Like, Mandalorian kind of can tell what that's about. Book of Boba mm-hmm. Fett is self-explanatory. But, like, Andor? What, like, who is this guy from Rogue One, you know? And it has turned into one of the most beloved pieces of Star Wars media, for me at least, ever. It's of all time. Yeah, I think it, it. what helps that is because of how purely different it is. And it's something that we've touched base Refreshing. on a few times of how this is really the first time we've gotten a live action Star Wars novel sort of a deal. Like <clears throat> the acting is so heavy. The monologues are so heavy. The, the shadow work and the espionage is being played. The fucking ISB agents, like everybody is on point yes. this entire series. Heavy, it's heavy, but like, and like it's dense as well. Yeah, and There's like I've been so talking, much packed in, and I've been talking to a, like a, a bunch of people on the street about it, and like not a lot of a lot of people realized that it was just or thought that it was going to be six episodes, <clears throat> so they stopped watching. They stopped watching <laughs> right after the fight, and then Uh-oh. so like so that like for some people, I've been talking to them about it, and they didn't realize that there was more stuff, and then. You know, well, I mean, honestly, sure. It's the long, like we if, we normally get six episodes, so yeah. this is like twice the length of a regular Star Wars show. And we know for sure that we're getting two seasons of it. But right. um, yeah, it's like a Tom Clancy Star Wars, and it's just like, yeah, yes, it, it's been so exciting. It's been so exciting. There was a lot of stuff that happened last episode. Um, yeah, it's about to get crazy in this finale. Everything has been set up. This is the funeral, you know, right. Marva's funeral. Marva's funeral on Ferrix. This is, like, obviously going to be the big set piece, the big action set piece, I think. We know that Andor is coming back, most likely to try and rescue Bix, who I have my doubts whether or not she's going to actually make it out of this episode. Um, but I, w- I was thinking about it, and, and they gave us, like, this is one of those shows where they don't really spend time focusing on background stuff for no reason. Mm-hmm. You know, like, every little bit of extra exposition comes back into the fold plot wise somehow so the fact that marva is getting turned into a brick like the whole bricking the whole haunted town thing yeah it's gonna come back it's gonna come back up and my speculation is what if they use marva's brick as like a block of c4 and like blow something up like in the name of the rebellion like i feel like marva would would want she'd be down with that right yeah she'd be down with that um, I don't know. I saw in some of our comment section and like our review that some people thought that Marva was maybe faking her death. That like they're using know. the funeral to cover. I'm like, you know, that's that's a good wish. That's a good wish. I don't think like I, that's, that's pretty. I hard. would hope for that. Yeah, I don't think it's the case. And then uh, the other the other uh, big group wish that I've seen is people thinking that B two emos like personality chip or whatever is going to be what becomes the- k2so yes yeah. i've seen I'm that like, too yes mm-hmm. again that's a cool it's idea a sweet dream it's a really sweet dream i wouldn't like i'm not going to get my my hopes up on that one because he's supposed i feel like to if you an put imperial droid and have the memories of the imperial droid so i think k2 is going to be his own separate unit i i agree with you and i also just think that their personalities don't match enough i feel like if you put b2 into like a humanoid droid body You'd get the you'd get the Alan Rickman robot from Hitchhiker's Guide. You'd just be all depressed yes. all the time. Oh my god, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Versus or like AP five, you know? K two has has a little bit more of an edge to him. He's a little more spunky. Um as for Marva faking her own death, like I can see why she might think that's a good idea, but I can't imagine all the people of Ferrix would be willing to emotionally torture this poor yeah. droid over it, like just to sell a fake death. Or torture themselves. The daughters of Ferrix could be the only ones who fucking know about it. It's true. It it's true. It could just be the daughters of Ferrix. But I don't. I, I just know that they've made they've made damn sure that we, the audience, know that there's a tunnel under that hotel. It's true. And yeah. whether Andor's going to use it to rescue Bix, or the daughters of Ferrix are going to place Marva's brick in there to blow up the the hotel, because that's the center of Imperial occupation on Ferrix right now. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, the other, the other. Dude, what about up. Luthen's? Sorry to cut you off. What about Luthen's fucking ship, dude? With the lightsaber, like, like 
Speaking of the laser projectiles, <laughs> how about his Batmobile? How about his Batmobile nail guns that destroyed yes. the, the tractor beam dish for the for the you know prototype Star Destroyer painting? That was like, so sick. That was so sick. The the, like he, took... he pretended to run a little bit so that they would increase yeah. the level of the tractor beam and then so that it would do more damage. Them. And then just blunderbuss. He just blunderbusted the whole thing. And then like the idea that like the, there's this ship. This Im imperial ship just floating in space, this giant ear just spying on people. Like, it's crazy. yeah, the uh, the arrestor cruiser. Great. I love it. Yeah, it, it's great because it, it to me it's like the opposite version of like the interdictor, which just is just bristling with gravity wells all over it. It's like an entire massive cruiser that serves a singular purpose. Yeah, to yank shit out of hyperspace, and the arrestor cruiser. <laughs> Is like this massive thing that serves another singular person. It purposes like, uh, what's going on over there? Like, we're listening to you. Or yeah. like the giant star destroyer that's actually a star destroyer repair ship. Like, fuck. That's so cool. That was really um, cool. final predictions in uh, theories. Oh, actually, wait, before we do what that, I was gonna say is someone made the comment of like, well, isn't isn't a death brick like a tombstone? I'm like, no, my dead ashes aren't put into a tombstone. Therefore. It's not the same as death brick. That's true. That's true. Um, um, well, I mean, there are there are urban legends about workers on like the Great Wall in China that like died during construction that were just sort of like in the, in the wall, you know? Yeah. Like stuff like that happens sometimes in history. No, I think I think that they have certain like ceremonial. I don't want to say sacred walls in Ferrix, but they totally have brick walls that are specifically full of like. That is the cemetery. Is this wall? You know. Yeah, that's true. I have I noticed. If, that I guess if you knew, so much of Ferrix is made of brick. I've noticed I guess, that. Yeah, right. I guess if you preemptively knew that, like, hey, you live in this cultural city, and when you die, there's a chance you're going to get turned into a brick. You know, it's not just like you. It, that's you know a surprise upon your. Well, turn it's not even like a, there's a chance. It's like when I'm a, I'll be a brick someday, and so yeah, you better right? learn like how that, to do this for when like mind. It helps you yeah. move on. Yeah, it's the equivalent of having an urn on your mantelpiece with some relative in it. You know, That's like true. yeah. And it's kind of a cool. It's kind of a cool community idea to have. Like you're growing up in this town, and like you know that your ancestors are Maybe like ancestral. Physically, you are physically surrounded by by your forebears because they are built into the surroundings. You know. <sighs> That's if you think about it. That makes that makes it much more clear why the people of Ferrix are so willing and ready to defend their shitty little town. That's true. Because there's so much sentimental value literally baked into the mortar of these buildings, you know? Like, it's not like, oh, well, we could just hey, up and this, leave and find some other shitty place to have a subsistence living. It's like, no, this is our place and it's yeah. full of our history and we will not let the Empire take it from us, true. you know? 100%. It's very cool. Uh, we, we have, have a Patreon poll. A Patreon poll, indeed. Let's see here. Last Patreon poll of the season. Okay, um, clearly everything is coming to a head at Marva's funeral, and Andor is on his way to rescue Bix. But the question remains, will he be successful? Will Bix survive Andor season one? Uh, with 13 votes? No. Sorry, what? what's your what's your answer? First of all? Does Andor even know that Bix is arrested? Or like, he could think that she's just free willy-nilly. It's possible he has no idea that she's arrested right now. The only thing that he knows is that Marva's dead, right? So, with Marva being dead, he's going to come back to Ferrix. He's going to learn what's up with Bix. And I think he's going to go try and get her back. There was a shot from, like, the trailer. One thing that we haven't had, like, I always look at the trailers and then try and find the footage that's unaccounted for. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen this shot of him in the tunnels. So we know he's going to use the tunnels to access the hotel, and we know that Bix is currently in the hotel. So just putting two and two together, he's coming for her. But will he be successful? 69% um, of the people said that Bix lives, that she's going to survive. 31% say Bix dies. 13 votes total. So people are pretty optimistic out there. You guys are pretty hopeful. I'm hopeful as well. I'm like, eh, I think she's going to die, being a realist, and just like getting a sense of the, the general tone of the show and how dark they're going. But I have my fingers crossed. I really do hope that she survives because I like Bix. Same. I also just realized that our last episode didn't have a whole lot of Mon Mothma stuff, which means this season finale 
could have a lot more Mon Mothma, and we might not actually get that much funeral stuff. Oh, dude, I hadn't even thought about that. We could yeah. get the Gorman Massacre, or the aftermath of that this episode, and Mon Mothma could finally have to flee. Because didn't we get right. all the Saw Gerrera stuff last episode, too? Yes, yeah. yes we did. We need Well, we're going to need to have oh, the, the result of the Spell House... The, the 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 spell house attack from Anton Krieger like Saw Gerrera is not going to listen to Luthen he's going to go in and try and save his ass and the whole thing's going to go sideways. Uh, Brandon Curtis says, "I believe Bix will live only for the sake of Bendu's heart." Nice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. She'll be in rough shape, you, but she'll live to die another day. Oof. Thank you, yeah. friends. Had us in the first half. I do agree with you. She will die at some point. Yeah. Angel Amparo says, "I believe that Bix will survive at least until season two. Despite the fact that she's not a central character to the story, I believe, still believe her arc hasn't fully been developed. I think it's unlikely the character would just disappear without a satisfying payoff to her growth. That's true. That's true. It would be super fucked up for the show directors or the writers to just like purely make this really interesting character purely as a torture device piece. No, you're right. Um, I don't know, though. I mean, I feel like her satisfying payoff is Andor finally having nothing left to lose and joining the Rebellion in earnest. Because Marva is now dead. Oh, get, oh, for, the for only Bix. connection to his past that's still around is really Bix, you know? Yeah. Like, there's Brasso, but he doesn't see... He, he really seems to <laughs> take that friendship for granted. Um, but yeah, so if Bix dies, I feel like that would be the... Maybe not satisfying, bittersweet, but a payoff nonetheless. It would turn... It would transform Cassian into the rebel that we know in Rogue One, you know? I think, oh man, I think we're about to, to meet that Andor in season two. Yeah, well, season two is going to have crazy time skips, so we will definitely know him by the end of that. That's true. Relax Your Sock says, I voted no, though I really want to be wrong. I just think that if the show jumps ahead for season two, many of the characters we are getting now will be gone. With the exceptions, of course, of Mon, Melshi, Andor, Saw. I also recently rewatched some of Diego's interviews at Celebration, and he characterized the whole show as thriller, adventure, and darkness. <laughs> that last one has a pretty ominous tone. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, Sun my space, heart yeah. wants Bix to survive. My brain tells me this show's not that kind of show, and we're going Sun to dark spaces. places. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of Aiden good Pullen says in this show for a reason, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> Aiden Pullen says, they've already tortured her. They don't have a reason to kill her. I don't know. I feel like they've already made us feel upset at her expense. If anyone dies, it would be the other guy who hasn't had anything bad happen to him yet. Brasso. I'm worried for Brasso. I think Brasso might, uh... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I thought he was talking about Professor, uh, Dr. Gauss for a second. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. That guy? Yeah, no. Monstrous Dr. Gorst. He, he definitely deserves to be, like, hung upside down somewhere, for sure. No, Aiden's talking about, totally talking about Brasso, the nice guy who everyone loves, and I too. have a sinking feeling that he's gonna die in the big battle of Ferrix that's gonna break out at Marva's funeral. Because, like, it's going down. As soon as Andor shows up, it's gonna be a race between Cinta and the ISB to kill him first. Bro, what is it And once one of them reveals yes, the other one, like, they're gonna try and kill each other, too. So, like, it's gonna I, get fucking crazy. That's gonna be a different... That's that, that would have to be, like, a separate... Uh, or what, like, could have been a secondary Patreon poll. Is like, whoa, just, do you think Cinta is gonna die? Or do you think Bell's gonna die? I think, I mean, I think... One of them's not making it tonight. I don't I think... I think, like, the great Rogue One before it, no one is gonna live through this series that we didn't see in the movie kind of thing. You know, well, yeah. All these new, like, uh, um, what's the word? All these new auxiliary rebels that we're meeting—they're all gonna die in the service of this rebellion. Retro just, rebels, dude. Just to help, just to help, like, underscore the sacrifice of Rogue One. This whole show is gonna be sacrifice upon sacrifice, probably culminating with Luthen giving his life. Uh, Final Noel got the manifesto. Oh, yes, the manifesto is absolutely coming back into play. I'm glad you mentioned that. We're going to see some manifesto action, too. Um, Noel Dandy says, I'm going with She Lives. To be fair, they really don't seem to care what happens after they've tortured people. Quote, I'd really like to hang him. Fuck that guy, by the way. I want him to die the most. The Imperial that Blevin just sort of like, he was like, yeah, you can have a title. I don't care. Just do your thing. And he's like fully reveling in this tiny bit of power he has over the people yep. of Ferex. Mm -hmm. He pisses me off the most. For some for, I don't know why he gets to me more than like 
Dedra who's out here torturing because people. Because he's but... directly abusing his power and like directly getting joy out of torturing people. Quote, yeah, he's a little too he's a little too bold, too little too like um blatant about it. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. He's a bit too much of a Nazi. Still wondering about Luthen being a Jedi Shadow or Sentinel. I really hope we get a little of his backstory. I'm glad you brought that up so that we Bro. can just sort of address that real his, quick. His a collection, man. His amazing collection. Yeah. Luthen is not a Jedi. He is I don't know. He is probably the only person in the show that I I am realistically convinced has known a Jedi before. Like he's probably met a Jedi, you know what I mean? He was part but, of the um underground railroad. What was it called? The uh, the, the path? Yes, yeah. Or the way? Pretty sure no, it wasn't the way. I'm pretty sure he was part of the path. It was the path. Yeah. That's right. Well we heard it. Um we heard about Kobe. Yeah. I don't think Luthen is a Jedi. For the same reason that I kind of think that Vix is gonna die. I think that Tony Gilroy has like bent over backwards to show us that this isn't that kind of show and that Star Wars is more than lightsabers and the force and it's everything. Just, and yeah, then if Luthen and if Luthen ends up being a Jedi, it kinda under it kinda undoes a lot of the message that they've been building here. Mm-hmm. That the rebellion was built on the backs of like simple everyday people who came together to overthrow to like, you know, to stand against tyranny and like the Jedi joined and there are Jedi allies along the way. But this yeah. isn't something that was like the whole point of it is that it was started by non force users, you know, people who were just like the everyday people. Well, making the, old, making the big sacrifices. I was going to say, oh, say, unless you played Force Unleashed, and then we learn and find out that it was actually secretly Starkiller that brought all these non force users. Yeah, to. see, exactly. But, that's but anyway, the whole. I was going to say. And that's like the, that is the primary criticism of the yeah. Force Unleashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. How it deals with story like that. And that it was, it was oh. purely Vader's idea to make the rebellion in the first place. I lied. Um, I lied. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna say, uh, but but uh, on that note though, like similarly, like I think part of Luthen's character, like his Coruscant, like art director character, is he's totally the equivalent of the Indiana Jones, which I think is why he has such eclectic, cool art pieces, and yet he somehow is able to get under the radar of the feds. Because like, dude, straight up had two separate holocrons. Granted, they were turned off. Like, they were probably... And they were in the back room, too. But, like, no, you're right. And I, I understand the suspicion because yeah. he has he is surrounded by, like, artifacts. And a lot of them are Jedi involved. But I still think that... I think that that is something that the Imperials would look right through. Because one of the... I, I think it's not an it's not an accident that he's an antiquities and, and like, rare artifacts dealer. Or the Padme headpiece. It, or the it, it, it buys right into like the right imperial, there. the imperial arrogance, the um, the core world like supremacy and arrogance of like, oh, these are like some weird exotic cultures. Doesn't really matter what they are or where they came from. It's fancy looking, and I want it on my shelf, you know, next to well, my like jar of squigs for the Chandrillan house party or whatever. Like, yeah, they're it, it, they're wanted because they're like opulent and decadent, and and it's. The people are ignoring the actual histories, the native histories of these objects. Yeah. And that is, is and like they don't look closely enough at those things. It's so the they look at, so like the average imperial citizen looks at a holocron or a datacron and they're like, oh, well, it's some ancient crap, whatever. That'll make a cool paperweight. You know, like they just don't care. They don't care. It's the Coruscant uh, Pier One imports. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah pre-distressed like jedi robes and stuff yeah all right the episode is out are you ready best friend i am do it who is sizzling circuits oh look at that look at that that night shot is that ferrix still i think that is ferrix Oh look, Scarif shuttle. Theta class. Oh, that's right. They parked. They parked in the industrial district. This is the son of the shopkeep who got pulled in. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you making a pipe bomb, good sir? He's making some sort of an IED. I couldn't stand it. Not being there for your mum. Have Brasso place a stone just. Breaks your heart, right? Let's try to get him to talk. Maybe just one. 
For better, for who though? You know something I don't? Do me a favor, keep it that way. That's some reverse psychology right there. Mm-hmm. Apply him with booze, get him to spill. I was gonna say, please don't be pro-Empire, bro. That's just it, he could be working for either side at this point. Bro, is he building like a fancy thermal imploder? Oh, it's his dad. For his dad. Yeah, yep, for I, his thought dad. Was, I thought it was Andor's face for a second. Cloris, we'd like privacy, please. Ma'am. What now? You're gambling again. Nonsense. And here, in Coruscant. That's ridiculous. It's a lie. It's total fantasy. Who's telling you this? Please. <laughs> No, I'm serious. Privacy, indeed. Fucking spying ass. You go to Canto Bight. Do. Nice. Whatever it is you need to do. Name drop. Not here. You tell me who's saying this, and I'll tell you why. Oh, please. Where would I get the money? That's the question that scares me the most. Someone's lying to you. On that, we can agree. Damn. I thought he was just like a crappy, disaffected husband. Is he actually on the take? Like, is he know. getting money or, from the Empire? Or if she's like trying to place the blame? I don't know. He's a guy in town. His boss showed up tonight. Good to see you too. Oh my God, Vel, get over it. <laughs> That's not what's happening here. A woman. Here, now. I was on my way to pick you up and they left the hotel dressed like locals. Vel's like, who is this woman? Do you think she's pretty? Come away from the window. <sighs> Back in the lion's den. C -c -c Cassian. I know, right? Just waiting for B2 to Fuck. see him really loudly just blow his cover. <laughs> Look at that heavy guy. Stand back, let it drip. Look how quickly that's cleaned up. Hard to believe, right? Two minutes. No longer, no shorter. In the hot ass oil. People don't look down the way they should. They don't look down, they don't look past the rust. Not us, though, eh? Eyes open, possibilities everywhere. Damn. I don't know why that got me so much. There will be times when the struggle seems impossible. Mm. I know this already. Remember this. Freedom Everyone's is unfair. a pure idea. It occurs spontaneously and without instruction. Oh, we're hearing the manifesto right now. Oh, shit. The frontier of the rebellion is everywhere. And even the smallest act of insurrection pushes our lines forward. Remember this. He's reading it. He kept it and he's reading it. Tyranny requires constant effort. It breaks. It leaks. Authority is brittle. Oppression is the mask of fear. Remember that. Oppression is the mask of fear, bro. His moments of defiance will have flooded the banks of the Empire's authority, and then there will be one too many. One single thing will break the siege. Remember this. Try. Sweet hover tank, bro. Troopers. I love how bumpy it is. Reminds me of the old land speeder. Was she more angry about him lying or the possibility of gambling debts? Hard to say. Mon Mothma is of great interest here. Having her husband dig a hole for himself could be helpful in many ways. They've made some odd banking moves recently. This would certainly explain it. Oh shit. Riga, you're missing it. Wow, so Cloris is directly reporting to the ISB. That's intense. What a dick. I, oh man, I really love Luthen's shit. The Hallcraft is so dope. And look at this sweet little oh, bike he's is, got, this too. Is, this is from the trailers. We've seen yep. this. Let's go. Old Republic vibes. Dude, I was going to say Phantom Menace vibes. Totally, with Maul, with his little, <laughs> his little speeder. Yeah, bro. Aww. That's a real hug. Yeah. 
the last time I saw her, we argued. Don't. I told her I was coming back. Stop. I never should have left that morning. Stop. Tell him none of this is his fault. It was already burning. He's just the first spark of the fire. He knows everything he needs to know and feels everything he needs to feel. And when the day comes that those two pull together, he will be an unstoppable force for good. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. Chills. I love him more than anything he could ever do wrong. Man, Brasso is such a G. This is exactly what Cassian needed to hear. Nice. Oh my god, these guys. Switching hats. <laughs> Love it. The hell they switch hats. Make sure they're more undercover. <laughs> He's clanging differently. Get center. I'll be at the hotel. It is a different clang. Nice. I wonder if one of them is playing a clue horn. Space flutes. <laughs> it's so weird. He's walking very carefully with his bomb in his bag. It's a sweet beard. <laughs> Get these people off the streets. Nice Imperial Army uniforms. <laughs> these two. Right? Like what are these like what are these dunders gonna do? They're gonna ruin everything. <laughs> the ISB's plan's gonna go off without a hitch and then they're gonna stumble into it somehow. I will twice as much and ride out of the oh, I knew it. I knew it. Man. God, there's so much tension in the air. Marva really was like the daughter of Ferrix, you know? There's the brick. Damn. Oh, B2. Sorry. She's here. My girlfriend. I love. <laughs> oh, that shot. Stone and sky, stone and sky. Oh. Eating his lunch, briar pistol in the face. B2 gonna blow himself up. Oh, no. No, it's a hologram of Marva. My name is Marva Karassi Andor. I'm honored to be a daughter of Therix. I'm honored to be worthy of the stone. I always wanted to be lifted. I was always eager, always waiting to be inspired. The dead lifted me. And I yearn to lift you. Not because I want to shine, or even be remembered. It's because I want you to go on. You hear that, Bix? We've been sleeping. We took their money and ignored them. We kept their engines churning, and the moment they pulled away, we forgot them. Oh. I've been turning away from the truth I wanted not to face. There is a wound that won't heal. At the center of the galaxy. Dude, Luthen's gonna hear this speech and this is gonna make him want to like... He's realizing there's more to it than just Andor here. It's here and it's not visiting anymore. The Empire is a disease that thrives in darkness. <laughs> My god, bro! It's easy for the dead to tell you to fight. And maybe it's true. Maybe fighting's useless. Perhaps it's too late. God, look at all their faces. They're so amped up and ready. I'd wake up early and be fighting. 
these bastards. From the start, fight the Empire! Hey! You don't touch B2 like that. Get him, Brasso! Oh! Did he just brain him with the brick? <laughs> There's Sparta kicking the shield. Fight the Empire, let's go! Oh! oh my god, look at him crawling out of there. Oh my god, he's gonna try and shoot the time grappler. Yes. I'm so nervous. Pick her up, get her out of here, come on. No, Kubas! Oh shit. It's about to get real. Oh, he's totally gonna like. Cyril! What the f <laughs> Holy shit! All the thermal imploders! Holy shit! All the all the ammo caches! <laughs> because they wanted to show force. Oh my god. God. Get the fuck up, Luthen. You gotta go. You gotta go. How many people just fucking died? That was a really cool shot. Yes! Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> he just headbutted a helmet! God, so many people are dying. No, come on, dude, you got this! Oh. oh, her obsession is going to get her killed. I think Sinta and Korv are going to take each other out. Nice. Oh, she just knifed him. Straight knifed him in the kidney. Instant double tap. Oh shit! That was headshot. Dope. Did you see that? There was a jump headshot. Ooh, oh shit! Head. Cyril's gonna to, save her life, bro. Shout out to these stunts. Cyril's people. gonna save her fucking life. Someone tag this motherfucker, please. <laughs> yes! This is Ferex Sparta Kick! Oh, bro, are they gonna kill her? Oh my god, Dedra. Bro. Nah, Cyril's gonna save her. You. The most traumatic experience of her life just now. Holy shit. I knew that. I knew that. I should say thank you. You don't have to. Yeah, he's gonna be rewarded for that in season two with like an ISB job. God, look at that. What are you thinking, Luthen? What are you doing, man? You're bleeding. It's fine. That's blood. It's nothing. Not her blood. Yeah. It's not mine. It's not mine, she says. Yeah, she's so cold. Shit. Get Bix out of here. Cassie, what are you doing? You gotta leave too, dude. You gotta leave too. Stay low all the way to far side sea. The moment you get over the water, you climb. Yeah. You're not coming. Not today. I never got to see you. I'm counting on you. You always say that. And you always come through. He'll find us. Kasim will find us. 
I will. She reminds me of Bodhi Rook being all, I'm the pilot. I'm the pilot. I'm really happy and impressed and surprised that all of these people have survived. Don't jinx this just yet. Come on, guys. Oh, it's the ship that he flew in on in the first episode. Oh. He was on Morlana 1 escaping in that ship. Are we meeting suitors? What's... I think... Uh, yep. Kids. It's Davos' kid. I like that for once, Perrin and Mon are both like equally kind of against this. Mm -hmm. Prepare for evac. Full stealth. Full stealth. Someone's on the ship. Hopefully the girls. No. Cassian's blaster. Did you see that? His briar pistol's sitting right there. It'll make it easy. Hm. I will now. I love Luther's full look. No game. Kill me. Or take me in. Oh. Like that? Oh man! I heard a rumor there might be a credit and end credit scene. So I'm very pleasantly surprised with how many people survived just now. Like honestly, that's true. I was I was half expecting like a red wedding situation where like one class <laughs> bolt is going to like come and blow the ship up or some, or at least they're going to clean house. So and like totally when. Like, I jinxed it, and then the ship was flying away. I really expected, like, the Razor Crest all over again or something. But they got Glad away. It didn't they got happen. out. We can hopefully see these guys in, in Season 2 for sure. B2 got out. Bix got out. Oh, if we man, don't see them in Season 2, yeah. that's a happy ending. That means they made it. If we see them, it means they're going to get into more trouble, you know? Shout out to Luthen for randomly, you know, like wanting to kill a bunch of people, but inherently still adopting, adopting orphans, as it were. Like you could see it on his face. You could see it on his face during the funeral, during Marva's speech. Dude. Like he realized Luthen. during Luthen. During yeah, he realized he was Marvis like Andor speech. is someone we can really use. This is his mom. This like, is his mom. Yeah. Yeah. These are his people, like the people of Ferex. Like he realizes that the rebellion is already bigger than just the networks that he's built, you know? That was a really cool moment of realization for him in the midst of all this total chaos. God, this Meanwhile, means, Cyril saves Dedra's life. Yeah, dude, he was like waiting for this Prince Charming Cinderella moment this entire time. And then, well, I guess he wasn't really expecting her to be there on planet. But then as soon as- That was about to be her, a terrifying way for her to die. Like she was very shaken up by dude, that. She almost got ripped, like almost ripped to pieces. She got, she was almost Legit. hung in the street. 100 percent that's what happened to to clem that took him onto rick's road and hung him in the square what does this mean that like ferrix is imperial free what does this mean for the future it means that ferrix is about to get fucked, fucked up, up by up. the empire it means that ferrix that's why they got everyone out of there because you know what whoever's left is going to get oh, cracked right. down on what is this is this that star pieces this is what they were building? What is this? It's Death Star. It's reflection pieces for... Is that the dish? It's the fucking focusing... It's the focusing dish. Dude! It's the super laser! Look at that! What? <laughs> Okay, okay, just, everyone just everyone out there who was saying it was Death Star was right. They were right. I was wrong. <laughs> Damn, so they were, they were inter-panel locking mechanisms for the reflective, for the reflective panels. Fuck which which would reflect back the kyber power and 
retune it into the, the the focusing beams for the super laser. Fascinating. Jeez. Oh my god. All right. That was well, awesome. Shout out to everyone. That was awesome. Shout out to absolutely everyone over the internet, over Twitter, over YouTube, anyone who like absolutely was like called it like, oh no, these are totally Death Star pieces. They have to be Death Credit Star. Credit where it's due. Y'all call it. I still think yeah. it would have been cool if it had turned out to be like a nothing, just like busy work in the prison. But wow. I'm happy anytime I get to see the Death Star. So that was still awesome. And we know because of like we've seen that that like part that percentage of the construction, we know for a fact that there's a Star Destroyer overlooking that moment, and Palps and Vader are totally just like doing the power. Just pose. sitting there, just like like, we, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. That was a great little teaser, great little way to end it right there, showing us that the Death Star is becoming a threat. And this is a perfect place to tease the Death Star, too, because Rogue One is the story of the Death Star plans, you know? So, like, totally on brand for this. That was awesome. Do you have any final thoughts in conclusion for season one of Andor? Andor was such a surprise. It was such, like... Greed. It was, it was like, something cooked in a crock pot, you know? Like, there were so many savory pieces and savory bits to it, and, like... I'm kind of I'm kind of glad that it came out is these individual pieces because I feel like even now if we were to binge it like the, it's so dense that I feel like you would still have yeah. to take a break halfway through just because totally just totally you need to breathe just to breathe there halfway through. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I think that and I've already seen people saying that Tony Gilroy should be in charge of all Star Wars related things from now on, and. While I love the show, I disagree with that, and I am, yeah, I don't want to see people, I don't want to see people criticizing future Star Wars shows for not being Andor. Do you know what I mean? Ahsoka is going to be very stylistically different. Yeah, it's going to feel probably more like Mando and Book of Boba than it does than it does Andor, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that it's awesome that we have shows like this. I don't think that all Star Wars needs to be this way moving forward, though. You know, there's absolutely still a, a time and a place and an audience for like the more lighthearted, more action driven, kind of, kind of l- less dialogue heavy and less character driven stories. Yeah. It's a big galaxy. There's room for all kinds. Like, again, mind. like I, I'd say again, like kids couldn't watch this. Maybe high schoolers I mean, purely with the idea. They of, like, could. I feel like a lot of it would go over their heads. Yeah. You know? It just, yeah. It's, well, I mean, it's like it's not a kid's show, is what I. Yeah. It's like the people, the people that have accused Andor of being boring. That really, to me, is just revealing that you don't get it, you know? It is, it is definitely not boring if you understand what's going on, kind of thing. But there's a little bit more brain power involved in watching speech, a show like bro. Andor, I think. Dude, Marvis speech. Like, I can just I can just see the hashtags now going through Twitter of, like, hashtag we've been sleeping. Or, that was I don't, such a powerful like, scene, dude. Uh, yeah, her, I, I want to go back and listen to her speech again. Um I didn't think they were going to be able to top Luthen's speech for the really end of that other episode about sacrifice. Didn't blast but like, B two. I'm really happy that that, that yeah. their, their their option was just purely. I'm going to throw my jacket over this droid, you know. Versus like they totally could have just RPG'd him and just like that's not a real person. It reminded yeah. me of um, it reminded me of Forrest Gump when he's given the speech and the army guy tries to unplug the microphone. Remember that? Oh, uh, that was awesome. Oh, man. That was super awesome. I can't wait for season two of Andor, man. Like, I'm just thinking about how different things are going to be by the time we watch it, how much Star Wars we will have seen, you know, how many things we will know then that we don't know now as Star Wars fans. I can't wait. Um, Let us know in the comments below what you thought of season one of Andor, how it compares to other Star Wars TV. If you want more of this moving forward, if you you like this style of storytelling, if you if you would prefer the other style, let us know your thoughts. We would love to hear from you. Uh, we do regularly or semi-regularly do a Tuesday night podcast called Dork Forces. So Dork Forces. Stay tuned. Check us out, especially now that Andor is complete. Just means that Willow is going to start. So also, you I can can't wait. potentially catch us on the Grizzled Wizard reaction. Yes, there's going to be a lot of Grizzled Wizard content coming out in the next month. And I uh, refuse to apologize for the person I will become when Willow starts airing. Like, I it's like Willow's unbelievably start. hyped for that. This reaction was edited by Nerd Chronic to comply with copyright and all that, but if you want to check out the full-length, uncut version of this reaction, it's available on Patreon. There's a link in the description of the video to the Patreon page. Becoming a patron and supporting the channel not only helps us do what we do, but also gives you access to a bunch of cool things like full-length reactions, 
Uh, you can participate in polls like the one that we read earlier in this video and some Discord perks as well. Thanks again. And as always, may the force be with you.